So I've been kind of on the Amazon beat the last few days because I went to the Staten Island warehouse last week, built some sources, made some contacts, and boy, are they they taking what they did in Bessemer and jacking it up, except it, jacking it up quite a bit. Let me put the story in the super chat if you want to read along uh, right there, Substack. And again, you could sign up for free. So nothing stopping you from signing up for free. Please sign up for free. If you can't pay that $5, sign up for free. So let's uh, read what I discovered. And I'm working on a bigger story than this. This bigger story will show some significant problems with Amazon and racism. So get ready for that. So I want to read uh, what I just uncovered. Again, this is on Status Substack. We're calling it Status Substack. Exclusive, New York Amazon worker files complaint with National Labor Relations Board after a security guard blocked him from passing out union cards. So we've already broke uh, on this Substack. We posted the insane uh, anti-union messages that workers are bombarded with throughout the warehouse that, interestingly enough, after we reported it last week, Yesterday, a lot of the signs came down. I don't know. I know Amazon follows my Twitter, but Amazon started taking down a lot of the union bashing signs all over their um, warehouse after I reported on it and status quo reported on it. So points for us. That's why independent investigative reporting is important. Fresh off of uh, us posting the images, we found out uh, fresh off a complaint filed by uh, Staten Island Amazon worker Derek Palmer with the National Labor Relations Board over Amazon erecting an outdoor chain link fence to obstruct workers' unionization drive outside, Status Quo has learned another worker in the same warehouse has filed a complaint with the NLRB after a security guard blocked him from passing out union literature in the break room. Quote, I was handing out union literature in the break room and security came and confiscated it from me, which is blatantly against the National Labor Relations Act uh, NLRA, Connor Spence, a JFK 8 employee who is part of the Amazon labor union group uh, attempting to form a union, uh, told Status Quo. Spence pointed out that the security guard was with a third party company, Amazon Contracts, called Metro One. So something, if you don't know it about Amazon, they hire a lot of third party companies for security, uh, for um, consultants, which are really union busters who come down to Alabama, who come down to New York. Uh, it's in part so they can have plausible de deniability uh, if there's some bad apples among their contractors doing bad things. So as, uh, as Connor pointed out, Amazon likes to, quote, hide behind the third party, but Amazon is responsible for what their third party employees do, he added. And there you see the subscribe now button. So you can subscribe to our Substack for five bucks a month. We're really trying to build up Substack as a compliment uh, or, you know, eh, compliment, alternative, whatever, uh, to YouTube because YouTube's just killing us and a lot of other channels. The literature Spence handed out on May 16th were pamphlets that explained Amazon can't interfere with union organizing. But when he began placing the pamphlets down on the break room table, a security guard approached him, took a picture of his badge, company badge, and told him, quote, you're not allowed to do be doing that, and took the pamphlets. So you got to love the irony. He's putting down pamphlets to explain to workers who are bombarded all day with anti-union messages who are being psychologically intimidated into even considering the union by Amazon. He's putting down pamphlets to dispel that, to say Amazon cannot, cannot um, interfere with union organizing. And that pamphlet actually uh, referenced the case in Queens that Amazon had to settle uh, because of union busing. So while he's putting down those pamphlets saying, don't be, basically, you don't have to be scared. You can consider the union. You can talk to us. A security guard comes over and pulls away the pamphlets. So as Spence pushed back to the head of security, as, as Spence pushed back uh, to the head of security, Section 7 and 8 of the NLRA, the National Labor Relations Act, outlaws employers from interfering with union activities such as the type Spence was conducted, conducting. He filed a complaint with the NLRB regional office in Brooklyn the next day, but it was only yesterday, June 7th, that Amazon's HR, the head of HR, called Connor into a meeting and according to him, apologize for the security guard obstructing his attempt to hand out union pamphlets. 
quote, we just want to apologize what that security guard did. He wasn't directed by us to do that. Yeah, I'm sure. You have your right to hand out literature in the break room. Sprentz recounted uh, the head of HR telling him, adding that it's a big deal that Amazon's head of HR admitted guilt. But HR was informed about the incident by security soon after it happened, Spence claimed, making an apology nearly three weeks later, likely connected to his complaint with the NLRB. Quote, I don't know if they did that because the NLRB has decided to move forward with the complaint. If they wanted to apologize, they could have done it the same day or the next day because they know about it since it happened. HR's apology to Spence on Monday came the same day status quo learned Amazon took down a large volume of anti-union signage it had bombarded workers with in the back and front of the Staten Island warehouse. Quote, recently they've been taking down a lot of the union busting stuff. I think they're getting scared, Spence said, alluding to other media outlets that are currently digging into Amazon. Won't hold my breath, but I have heard that a major outlet is planning uh, an Amazon piece about their heinous uh, safety conditions during the pandemic. At the same time, Amazon pulled back on some of its most aggressive union busting. The company also sent out an email and text to JFK eight workers on Monday, listing the great benefits workers receive on the first day of employment. What Amazon does is as they are union busting, okay, as they, uh, from what I'm being told, refuse to pay disability claims for hurt workers who are then forced to go on state disability. Um, don't pay their workers what they're worth as they do all these things, as they threaten workers with termination for not being productive enough. So as they do all these terrible things, they mix it with positive reinforcement. So uh, signs like we are here for you, which I'm going to get to um, email text messages and emails reminding you of your great benefits uh, on day one at the company benefits that don't include paid sick leave. Um, so it's a psychological war. They give you a lot of uh, brainwashing propaganda about unions, and then they try to tell you, you no, you have it good. You don't need the union. Look at your benefits. Look at your pay. We, we give $15 an hour. In New York, it's a little more. It's propaganda. It's propaganda. If, it, if you can't live off your wages, your benefits don't, don't – I don't want to say don't matter – but are not sufficient. If you can't live off your wages, if you have to struggle off your wages, working 10, 12 hours a day, almost every single Amazon workers I talk to has physical injuries, most common back problems. I wanna also point out uh, the positive messaging came in addition to messaging around the warehouse that says, we are here for you and urging workers to reach out to their manager or HR if they have any question. So there's one of the signs that workers are indoctrinated with uh, alternate signs from the majority union busting signs. But one JFK worker told status quo, the Kumbaya signage is bunk. Quote, people are terrified in there. They're terrified of losing their jobs. A lot of them support families. A lot of them have kids. Some of them are taking care of their parents and grandparents. Natalie Monarez told status quo. She's a worker. She added that the warehouse workers are threatened with termination daily by managers and supervisors if they aren't working fast enough. Quote, the leadership tactics are all about fear and intimidation. It's reinforced every day. As status quo previously reported, Monarez went to the same HR claiming that we are here from you at the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, attempting to help an older employee with health issues. Quote, I went to HR in March 2020 and said there's a senior citizen I work with who has diabetes. She's more vulnerable to this COVID. So can I get her an N95 mask? Because I know you guys have them here because all of HR, keyword, key phrase, all of HR, the executives and managers had N95 masks on in March 2020. And the HR representative just looked at me and without even hesitating said, we're not giving them out to workers. You have to have a doctor's note. So think about that. Think about that. Managers, supervisors, and executives were given N95 masks in March 2020 when this pandemic, be well, when this pandemic hit America. I think it hit America a little bit earlier, but they wouldn't give their workers N95 masks. They wouldn't give their workers any type of mask. Why? Because they wanted to save it for customers because profit was more important than people. Profit was more important than the people making that profit. 
and somebody who has diabetes and an older worker get a doctor's note. Meanwhile, all the aristic, arist, aristocracy at Amazon had their N95 vests. And they're putting up signs, we are here for you. We had, there was 20, that we know of, 20,000 cases of COVID at Amazon. God knows how many deaths. Amazon, shocker, didn't respond <laughs> to me. The third party, uh, third party security uh, didn't respond. Uh, the NLRB did respond uh, to me. I'm just waiting uh, for them. Uh, so I'm just waiting for their response. They were asking me for the case number. So uh, once I have their response, we'll update the article. But honestly, to me, I, I think a lot of people think companies like Amazon, it's just insurmountable. There's no way to go up against them. And I don't want to diminish what they did in uh, Be Bessemer, Alabama. But Bessemer, Alabama, Alabama is 8%. 8% of workers are unionized. Pretty bad. New York, 22% of workers are unionized. One of the top rates in the country. I'm not saying New, New York is a progressive uh, populist bastion. It's not. Andrew Cuomo is the governor. Need I say more about that Republican who also is creepy and does sexual harassment and has been accused of assault too? Um, but New York is better fighting ground for these organizers who I'm not going to say all of their strategy because I don't think Amazon knows all of their strategy. But it seems they have learned some of the lessons from Bessemer, Bessemer's failure. It, also, they're not doing this through a union. They're doing it through the workers. The workers in Bessemer did it through a union. I'm not attacking that union, but sometimes unions are not as connected to the workers they're trying to represent. Well, in this case, workers are approaching um, other workers to try to talk to them about the union, try to dispel the myths Amazon, the propaganda feeding them, uh, handing out union cards, setting up barbecues right outside the warehouse to which Amazon put a fence around with a beware, do beware of dog sign and private property sign. 